Hello and welcome to Property Box News with me, Simon Evison. Coming up, we'll have an update on Rent Smart Wales and, of course, a look at the Chancellor's autumn statement. But first, many councils around the country are increasing their HMO licensing requirements to improve housing throughout their boroughs. Up until now, the national mandatory legislation requires a license on HMOs of three storeys or more and five people or more. From next year, several councils, including Oxford, the London boroughs of Ealing and Barnet, are including HMOs that are two storeys and four or more people. This is in an effort to improve standards and is likely influenced in some way by central government's plan to tighten licensing requirements for landlords of shared accommodation in an effort to clamp down on rogue landlords. Ridding the industry of rogue landlords has been a long-term aim across the country and these measures can be seen as another step in the right direction. We'll be taking a more in-depth look at HMO legislation in a later programme. Moving on now to the Chancellor of the Exchequer's autumn statement on November 23rd, tackling amongst other things what he called the housing challenge. He did not make cuts to stamp duty nor to buy-to-let tax reforms despite substantial lobbying from the industry. It's assumed that these will remain unchanged. He did, as expected, ban letting agent tenant fees. More on that later. The main property-related focus was on new housing. He announced that the government would pledge $1.4 billion aimed at funding the construction of around 40,000 additional affordable homes by 2020-21 and a $2.3 billion fund to unlock land for housing in areas of highest demand, relax planning re regulations to allow what the Chancellor called providers to build a wider range of new build homes and, specifically for London, Hammond said there would be an additional $3 billion for a predicted 90,000 affordable homes. Hammond described this package of proposals as delivering a step change in our ambition to increase our supply of homes for sale and for rent. Despite these measures, though, the Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell felt that Philip Hammond had done little to solve the housing crisis and that the measures fall well short of what is actually needed. Across the industry, the response is that the statement is a missed opportunity to help landlords and the housing market. Slashing the rate of stamp duty would have been Philip Hammond's single most effective fix for UK finances, said Anthony Hess, Managing Director of Property Personnel. The Chancellor later outlined plans for investment in the country's infrastructure, especially through the northern powerhouse regions, with the aim of boosting productivity and hoping to spread growth around the country and away from the traditional capital and southeast areas. With increased economy and spending, property owners in these northern regions could expect capital growth in the coming years. Towards the end of his speech, Philip Hammond confirmed there would be a ban on letting agents' fees levied on private tenants. Letting agents are currently able to charge unregulated fees to tenants, said Hammond, who described the most excessive fees as wrong. He said this ban would come into effect as soon as possible, likely after a consultation period. Nick Leeming, chairman at Jackson Stops and Staff, a state agency, reflects the views of many in the industry when he says this short-sighted measure means costs will simply be passed on to the tenants through high rent by landlords. Easy Property Chief Executive Rob Elise says he welcomes the Chancellor's decision. He said any sensible agency won't pass on the changes to landlords due to competition in the sector, so we don't foresee rent rises as there's no need to add the fees to rents. Of course, it remains to be seen how this measure will affect the market and we will keep a close eye on developments. And finally, a quick update on the Rent Smart Wales scheme featured in our last episode. The deadline passed for Welsh landlords to obtain a licence on November 23rd, and anyone not in possession of the licence will be liable to a fine. However, as a result of delays in the registration system, Community Secretary Carl Sargent confirmed that if landlords have begun the application process and done all they can to comply, they will not face any action. However, he was keen to stress that registration is mandatory and the delays cannot be seen as an excuse to ignore the law. That's all from me this time. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Reflects the views of many in the industry.
Ah. Oh, that was not the right 